Councillor Michael Crow, congratulations on being elected Mayor of Galway and the first Mayor of Galway from the Bohemore area of the city. Uh, how does it feel to be the, the new Mayor? Thanks very much, Jimmy. I was, as you know, I was elected on Monday night uh, by my colleagues here in this council chamber. Um, so I'm looking forward to the year. I'm honoured and privileged to have been given the opportunity for the next 12 months and I look forward to it. What first prompted you to get into politics? Um, I was involved in the local community in Renmore with regard to soccer and that um, and we were working to develop our facilities um, to try and better, better them and uh, it ended up really going from there. We had no facilities. Um, uh, that was about six, seven years ago. Um, and as a result, I got involved, with, as I said, first of all, locally within the Renmore area, fundraising, etc. And then it kind of led on from there uh, to here, to local politics. Um, I suppose it's a natural stepping stone from ordinary committee member of Renmore to chairperson, then to local councillor. And thankfully, um, on the 17th of July this year, we opened our, our new clubhouse. Uh, so I guess the involvement has paid off um, for the club, which is obviously very important. Every mayor that uh, comes into office obviously has their own agenda and their own vision of what they want to try and achieve over their 12 months in the job. What's yours? Well, I guess it's, you know, it's, first of all, it's only a short period of time. It's only a year, so it's limited amount. Um, but what I would like to see is, we'll say, improvements with regard to infrastructure. I'm chairperson of the uh, Galway Transportation um, Committee here in, in Galway City Council. And we've done enormous work over the last three or four years. You see a little bit of it around Galway now coming to fruition. You know, there's, there's bus routes and bus corridors, albeit small at the moment. But when I came in here five years ago, a bus route was something in Dublin. We had none of those in Galway. We now have a, a number of them with a number more coming. Um, we have applied under what's called the Smart Travel application for funding locally here to develop that further, along with walking and cycling. I'm, I'm hopeful that sometime in July, we'll get a positive announcement from f for that for Galway. And uh, even if I do say so to yourself, Firstly, I'd be, I'm fairly confident that we will, um, and that'll have reap benefits, you know, for Galway City. It's a fund of 50 million nationally. We've looked for 25 of it over five years, uh, and I'm very hopeful that we'll go close to that. Now, I've read that you see your job as, as being an advocate for Galway and, and being a, a go-between for the Galway City Council and people in Galway to government. What do you think you can, you can get from the government uh, for Galway? Because it's been widely... Um, noted that the country is, is an economic meltdown at this stage uh, and quite a lot of that blame has been apportioned to, to the party that you represent. I think some of the criticism is fair. That's, uh, that, that would be my, my view. Some of it is overboard. Um, the, other side of, the other side of that is that we'll say, as I said already, what I'd be hoping to secure for Galway is some of the Smart Travelling Fund um, and other funds like that that have been ring-fenced, we'll say, for national projects but might put us in a better position to get them. Another significant thing in the city, and not just in the city, but in the, in the county and country, is the current status of the many former self-employed people who basically ran businesses for the last 10 or 12 years, possibly longer in cases, who contributed to the economy, who paid all their VAT, who paid all the taxes for their employees, and now have either gone out of business as a result of the recession, or they simply can't find work, or whatever. Those people are currently entitled to no benefit. That is absolutely ridiculous. Their employees are entitled to benefit. So you own a company in the morning and for one reason or another goes out of business, you were not entitled to any social welfare. Yet the guys you were employing and who you were paying tax for are entitled. And Minister O'Keefe, who I met recently, has agreed to put together some sort of a pilot project to facilitate that. And he is, he is going to, to, to possibly announce in the next number of weeks a scheme for 3,000 people countrywide who can apply, who are former self-employed, who can apply to go on it. But surely that is going to make the, the, the social welfare bill even higher and, and we're uh, approaching a budget where the, another €3 billion euro of savings has to be found. Well, he has already basically found savings in, within it currently. Um, whether it does or doesn't, um, you know, he has said that he can't basically, his budget is his budget, he's not allowed to go outside that, there will be no increase. He's given a commitment to find the money within the current resources. So it'll be robbing Peter to play Paul, he'll take it off somebody else and give it to these guys? Well, not necessarily, in the sense of that we'll say over the last 12 months in particular and, and 18 months, there's been enormous effort put into, we'll say, dealing with the social welfare fraud. And they've saved, I think last year was approximately 500 million uh, within that when they actually went through everybody. And that's continuing to happen. So there, there's savings in that regard, which, which basically go towards a project like this. But I suppose, the budget is the budget, it's not going to be any more, but 
basically the self-employed people need to be looked after somewhat, or the former self-employed people. One of the more interesting things uh, I've heard you suggest is that Chinese should appear on the curriculum of some schools in Galway. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, China is the biggest economy in the world. Um, it has enormous opportunities. They're only beginning to develop, to look into Europe and the Western world in the past number, of, in the past decade really. Um, and you saw the Taoiseach recently who announced on Monday that there's consideration being given to by companies in China to operate in the base in Athlone to service Europe. It's only a, a maybe at the moment, but they are looking to areas in Europe like that. I don't understand what the point is in, in, in basically telling students that they have to learn French, making it compulsory for them to learn French. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's a fine culture, it's a fine country. We might have issues about soccer, but we'll deal with them again. But ultimately, there is, there is no real benefit for the students in it in the long run. It's a, it's a traditional thing. It's a thing that was always done. So I was simply making the point, we don't always have to do it, we don't always have to continue it. And that the possibly be giving students, particularly maybe younger students, an option to learn Chinese as they go along would be benefit. If you are a massive company in China and you're looking to the Western world to set up, then if, if you have a Chinese on the curriculum, in, even in parts of Ireland, not all of Ireland, but parts of Ireland start with, they might actually come here and go, yes, we, you know, they have a certain amount of, of, of the language already, we can set up a base here and develop from there. So the reason I mooted it was for purely economic reasons, to give people the benefit of, of, we'll say, Chinese companies setting up here. Back in the 2007 general election, you were narrowly defeated uh, for a seat at Dáil Éireann. You now obviously have the highest profile local job in politics in Galway. Do you feel that's going to be of a benefit to you when you obviously will run again? Well, I suppose, first of all, for the next 12 months, my concentration will go into working here locally and representing the people here locally. Um, obviously, I would like to run again for for Fianna Fáil and the, you know, for a Dáil seat. There's no point in saying anything else. Um, but that said, you know, I'd still have to go through a process to be selected. I'm hopeful I will be, but uh, that's somewhat out of my hands. We'd have to take into account party members' views and also the Taoiseach and, and his, his team's views. So I'm hopeful to do that. And but more importantly, the next 12 months is about working for Galway, um, basically trying to bring things to Galway that haven't happened before. Um, and we'll go from there and we'll see what happens.